Hi and good morning and welcome back to Banjara's Facebook Live Saturday program. Okay, let me start with uh, asking you a question. Do you tell lies? If anyone out there says no, then I would classify you as the biggest liar. You know that very often we don't even realize what is a lie when we are telling the truth and when we are telling a lie. The dividing line is not so clear as we would like to believe. We think that the dividing line is very clear. You know, we are taught that moral sciences that you have to tell the truth, you should not tell lies, telling lies is a sin. All that happens. But in real life, what happens as a child, as you grow up, you started seeing that there are a lot of people who give you bhashan, who tell you, you should not tell lies, you should not do this, you should not do that. But in practice, what happens is something which is completely different. So, you know, the funny thing, the lesson that we learn as children is slowly, slowly. First, we actually think that, no, I should not tell lies. Daddy will get angry, mommy will get angry and God will get angry if I tell lies. That's how it starts off. But slowly, you know, what you rea realize that you should not tell such lies that you get caught. That is the role modeling which a lot of our seniors and elders and parents do to us. Always make sure that when you tell a lie, you do not get caught. So cover your ground and then tell lies. So now we are becoming more and more of an expert in telling uh, lies. We are learning the proper techniques of how to go about uh, it. Anyway, as I said, this whole thing starts in childhood. Most of us, you know, realized that you have to tell lies, otherwise you are in deep trouble. So we try our level best to find out where I can tell lies and get away and where I, it is risky to tell uh, uh, lies. So sadly, telling the truth or upholding values or not keeping away from uh, lies and all that does not become a matter of principle or morals or values. It becomes a matter of survival. What is the best way that I can get away from uh, it? Okay, as we grow up and as we get more and more independence, as we can, you know, have choices, we can select what activity to do, whom to talk to. So many things start coming in our control. Many of us start reducing those lies and say that, no, now that I have the opportunity to be able to tell the truth and stay by the truth, it is fine with me. But many of us do not do that. We are somewhere doddering between this values, principles and truth on one side and on the other uh, side, what is practical reality. So anyway, we have finally grown up. We have come out of the clutches of parents and teachers and all that. We are independent now. We probably have a profession. We are working somewhere. We get a good job and we go to some very reputed organization to work with. And the first thing they teach you is how to tell lies. You have to tell lies to your customers, otherwise you will not survive. Now, when I start telling lies to my customers, what happens if I tell a few lies to my boss also? Since I'm used to it, I already have it somewhere in my subconscious mind. It's not gone away somewhere. So we pick it up very fast. Now I know that my company will praise me when I tell lies and because it gets me more business or more profits. So anything and everything goes as long as you are you know, providing good results to your organization. So you can keep telling uh, lies. And what is there to prevent me from telling lies to others? Why should I restrict it only to customers? Then my boss asks me some very you know, embarrassing uh, situation and some questioning is going on. I know that if I just tell a lie, I can get away with it. With my colleagues, I want to show off, I can tell a lie and I can get away with uh, it. So this is what happens to some people at least who 
become what is the topic of today that is compulsive liars i'm sure each one of you out there can think of at least one or two people maybe more who consistently tell lies i'm not talking about the average person who when he is cornered he tells a lie and on other times he upholds certain basic values and all that i'm talking about those who are constantly telling lies and there's another factor to it if i am telling lies because i want to escape punishment or because i know that by telling the truth i will get into trouble then at least i would give at least a 5% discount to that person and say he has some reason behind it but this thing called compulsive liars that i have been working on for quite some time now so i thought i'll condense everything and give it to you today compulsive liars interestingly tell lies even when there is no need to tell a lie that is the funny thing there is absolutely no need to tell a lie but they still tell a uh, lie if somebody asks this person hey i haven't met ali since many days uh, you are i wonder how he is this gentleman will immediately say oh yes yes uh, you know yesterday only i met ali and he was so nice to me you know we went out and had dinner together and we had such a wonderful time and then this person will say i was told that yesterday ali was in mysore he came back only late in the night yeah yeah that's what i'm telling you <laughs> not yesterday pa i was telling you that day you know that i went to, with him and i had dinner and i was recounting the, uh, that that's it but uh, i am told ali hardly ever goes out for dinner you know he's a very homebound person maybe lunch i can understand but dinner i am told ali never goes out for uh, dinners how come he went out uh, with you that is what i am saying i asked him to come for dinner i kept on telling he kept on saying no so i realized that you know he will not come for dinner so you know what i did i went out for lunch with him not every point he is getting cornered he realizes that people are catching him but he still insists on telling one lie after another and that is what we define as people who become compulsive liars they just cannot resist the temptation of telling uh, uh, lies even when there is nothing to be gained from it okay so let's go all the way back to childhood i told you that most of us pick up these basic habits and uh, attitudes and thinking and all that in our childhood i keep on reminding people consistently that your childhood plays a very important role whether you admit it or not whether you are even aware of it or not what happened to you in childhood the way you behaved the way you were treated the experiences the human interaction that you had in childhood particularly with those people who are most important the significant adults as we call them starting with amma appa if you had a grandfather grandmother teacher all these people who are what we call as significant adults whatever they told you you know we carry that through in uh, life very often without even realizing it one of them is this thing of you know compulsive uh, uh, lying there are a few factor there are a lot of factors in fact but there are a few factors which are somewhere common among children why they tell lies so here we have a good slide which has been uh, made by sunita as to what are these people children who are compulsive uh, uh, liars no we'll move on to the children part of it then we'll come back to why we all tell uh, lies right we'll go to the slide on children common reasons for children to tell uh, lies as i said there are many more first very obvious is covering up for guilt or deficiencies having low self esteem i know that i have done something wrong but i have to admit if i admit i am going to be in trouble so i better tell lies another factor is wanting to avoid punishment when you have very strict adults 
when you know that they just won't listen to me, I will get into deep trouble. My dad, my mom, my teacher, whoever it is, is going to punish me very badly. So the only way to escape from punishment is to tell a lie. Hoping for praise and affection, children who are lonely, children who are insecure, as I mentioned, children who have low self-esteem, are feeling isolated, are feeling that I'm not getting appreciation, I'm not being able to do anything worthwhile in life. What do they do? They start telling lies, hoping that with that they will get praise and affection. It can start with very small things like, you know, one uh, boy is saying that, you know, my daddy went to Delhi and got me this gift. Now he has to show that, you know, I want to overshoot him. No, no, no. My daddy went to America and he got me this uh, uh, gift. So everybody will stop looking at that child whose daddy is supposed to have gone to Delhi and they will look at you and they will praise you, right? Then, not sure between facts and fiction. That's a very interesting aspect of childhood. Many a time we don't even know what is true and what is not true. Because we live in a cocoon. So we don't know what's happening in the outside world. And very often, parents, adults keep creating some sort of an aura of the outside world, which gives us this feeling like, you know, how in babyhood you were told these fairy tales, there was this witch and there was this dragon and there was something. You actually believe that such things uh, exist. The same thing carries through your entire childhood. Then, of course, to boast to others, false values, value system is muddled. If I have my father who goes on telling everybody, you know, I just bought a Skoda car and nobody in the neighborhood has got a Skoda car and I bought it or something. Now, when you see that, you feel that that is the right way. So you start boasting. I got this pen from America. You know, it is a different pen more than others. Or we had to pay so much extra money for this T-shirt. You know, it's a branded T-shirt. Those in a ways and means of trying to boast and build up some false value systems. Sometimes <laughs> children tell lies because they actually believe that it is true. He started the fight. He used bad words. He hit me first. I, as a child, go on repeating this mantra so often to myself that I actually start believing that it is the truth. That's a funny part of childhood. And like I said, many of us carry that into adult life. That's the reason why I was mentioning this uh, to you. And then, most important, imitating adults. I go on and on and on telling adults who are dealing with children that please do not, you know, and, and please do understand that children do not listen to what they say, what you say. They mimic what you do. What sort of a role model are you? If daddy tells lies, mommy tells lies, whoever it is, it is very easy for the child to pick up because to the child, the whole world revolves around these significant adults. Okay, that's it as far as children were concerned. <laughs> One of my most favorite jokes is on the reality of uh, uh, children. There was a school which got over and all the children came out. Three small fellows, they came out and they were walking home when near the footpath, they saw a small little street dog, a puppy, tiny fellow. No mother, no owner, nobody is alone in the footpath. In fact, you know, the risk is if he goes on the road, some vehicle will knock him down. So all these three are animal lovers. These three looked at uh, the uh, uh, puppy and said, hey, I want the puppy. Second fellow said, no, no, I want the puppy. Third one said, I want the puppy. And very animated discussion was going on. Just at that time, the principal wound up all his work and came out. And he saw these three children. It's been such a long time since uh, school got over. Hey, kids, what are you doing here? No, sir, we are going home, sir. But we found this stray dog puppy, sir. So we thought we'll take him home. But the problem is there's one puppy and three of us. So, you know, we started fighting. 
that uh, you know, uh, I want the puppy, I want the puppy. Principal said, nothing doing. You should not fight. What is this value system that I've taught you? You should never fight like that. Yes, sir. You know, actually, what, then what we decided was, we will not fight. We will have a competition, sir. Whoever wins a competition can, will get the puppy. Ah, that's a good thing. See, I've taught you the right values. Good children. That's how you should go about it. By the way, what is this competition that you're having? Sir, we decided whoever tells the biggest lie will get the puppy. What? You call that a competition? What do you mean uh, whoever tells the biggest lie will get the puppy? Don't you know that you're not supposed to tell uh, lies? How much I've been inculcating that into you? How many times I've told you? You should never tell lies. And here you're talking about having a competition in telling the best uh, lie. You should never do that. How much I keep drilling this into you? You know, when I was your age, I never used to tell lies. All three of them looked at the principal and said, give him the puppy. So, those of us who don't outgrow this, you know, childhood habit of telling lies because of external circumstances, we tend towards what we are, I was talking to you today, that is becoming compulsive liars. So why is it that we become compulsive liars? Now let's have a look at that uh, slides. Do you agree that we all tell lies as I told you? There's nobody who can actually, who's such a saint and such a great uh, person that you know can say that no i never tell that maybe people like gandhiji and all that may be exceptions right okay so why do we tell uh, lies firstly as i said right from childhood to escape punishment that continues i told you know even my boss will shout at me if i tell him that i didn't reach out to 30 customers today whereas i felt that i would meet 20 customers and give value based uh, you know very important uh, you know, sales pitch to them. But boss says you have to complete 30. So he's still going to shout at me. So I'll tell him a lie. Yes, sir. I spoke to 30 customers today. Then to gain time in an awkward situation. That's another thing that we do. Right now, I think I'm going to get into trouble. If I can quickly tell a lie and escape from here, then I will be able to recoup and I'll be able to get back. So the only way to avoid a confrontation or avoid a humiliating or embarrassing situation right now is to tell a quick lie and move off from uh, there. The third one is to boast, which as I said, is inculcated into us, unfortunately, by our elders. We see so many of our elders boasting to others, trying to show off to others. And sometimes it becomes part and parcel of uh, us. Sometimes, you know, we tell lies saying it is for their benefit. If I don't tell my child this lie, then he will get into bad habits. So I told him a lie purposely, but I did it because it is for his own good, you know. Now the means uh, justifies the end or the end justifies the need means it's up to you to decide. Today you say you are doing it for his benefit. Tomorrow you may do it for some other reason. Then we talk about this white lies which don't hurt anybody. Yeah, I told him that I had done this and I'm getting that done and all that. It's just a simple white lie. It doesn't hurt anybody. So what difference does it make? Who are we to decide whether it hurts somebody or not? And who are we to decide that we will stick only to white lies and we will not allow those lies to spill over into areas where it can start hurting uh, people? Sometimes we tell lies out of ignorance. Let us have, give that benefit of doubt. We really don't know what is the truth. And we just blurt out something and we think that, yes, that is the uh, truth. That is also one of the <coughs> reasons. And of course, I told you, starting from childhood, if our self-esteem has not been built up, if we have been continuously feeling that I'm incapable, I'm not great, I'm not this, then we resort to uh, lies to get away from the and lastly, wanting to escape from responsibility or controversy. These are some of the reasons why we tell a lot of lies. But today, as I am uh, you know, uh, talking about, the people who cannot 
pull themselves back. It is very interesting, amazing to see that even when they get caught, <coughs> they still tell uh, uh, lies. Even when they know that people are labeling them, ridiculing them, laughing at them behind their back or in front of them, they still can't do it. It becomes almost like a personality disorder. I don't want to put labels on these things. I hate putting labels on the human beings. But yes, it is when it comes to that compulsive line that I just cannot get away without telling lies, whether it is beneficial or not, whether it is needed or not. But I have got so habituated to telling uh, lies. And that is what can create a lot of uh, issues for so many uh, people. And they go on justifying. There's that proverb, you know, that you tell one lie and you have to tell 100 lies to cover it up. And that is what happens to some of these people. And that is what we need to take cognizance uh, uh, of. Let me also tell you whatever anybody else may have to say about it. Compulsive liars are not genetic. You will sometimes come across saying that, yeah, his father was a liar, his grandfather was a liar. So I think it runs in the genes. No, it does not. What he got was role modeling from his father and grandfather. He saw them telling lies consistently. So he picked it up. But to my knowledge, as far as I can tell you, it is not something which is genetic. So don't try to escape from it. Uh, the other point also to keep in mind is some people are selective liars. They will never tell lies at home, but they will tell 100 lies in office. Some are the opposite. They'll never tell lies in the office, but they'll come home and they'll start telling lies left, right and center to their family members. So taking all this into account, let us now work on the most important uh, part of it. And that is, if you genuinely care for somebody who is a compulsive liar, or if you have realized that I'm getting more and more into this habit of telling lies, how do I get out of it? So here are some very, very simple six points which I collated and now Sunita is going to show it to you in a slide. Okay. The first is go into the past and see how the compulsiveness developed over a period of time. Remember that any addiction, any compulsive thing starts with a habit. We just do it once, twice, thrice, starts becoming a habit. Then you develop that uh, you know, withdrawal symptoms, if you don't, it becomes so, so, so much part of you that it becomes compulsive. So if you could sit back and relax and see how it happened, as I told you, in most cases, it would be starting from your childhood. And then what happened? Check the possibility of any of the eight parameters which I had given you, uh, you know, earlier. What are, are those? In the end, again, Sunita will show you those eight parameters. So those who want to photograph it and keep it or whatever. But those eight parameters which I showed you, please go through all of them and see which are applicable to you. And if so, what you can do to reverse it. Help the person understand how others may be looking down or ridiculing and they may not trust or give value to him because of his repeated lies. Very, you know, normally very... Uh, in a very uh, gentle manner, explain, you're a good person, you have capabilities, you can do so many nice things. People will appreciate you for your certain qualities. But this compulsive line is what is isolating you, is what is taking away people's respect for you. And people are laughing behind your back or people are you know, discarding you. Why do you allow such a thing to happen when you know that you're a capable person, you're a person who can build good relationships. So if you can get over this habit, you will be able to lead a much better quality of life. Help him identify his areas of discomfort or feeling of being incomplete that push him to seek attention through lies. I wanted to uh, study very high, do some MBA, PhD, something, something, and I wanted to go up in life, but various circumstances forced me that I had to stop my education. And today I'm in a job or in a position which is not very great. So that feeling of discomfort, others have gone up. My cousins, my classmates, my neighbors, they're all in high positions. I'm not in a high position. 
if that discomfort is going on you know bugging me inevitably because of what was taught to me in childhood and all that you know what i will do i will slowly start telling like yeah i also got a promotion yes my salary is double of that yes i am doing this i get this so start off by telling lies because of my feeling of being incomplete or having that discomfort so identify those areas and start working on them gently point out the negative outcome or troubles that arose when he told a lie take a previous incident and talk to him and ask him this is this said what had happened this was the situation i want you to introspect and tell me what happened and why it happened and what was the outcome i will also sit and discuss with you if you had not told a lie and if you had told the truth what is worst that can happen you know that worst case scenario i will be punished or i will be put down or my boss will say this to me or people will look down at me okay so what that worst case scenario if you can get over the uh, thing and then lastly give him lot of positive strokes when he does not tell lies that's the very interesting aspect of it that when the person is doing something bad this is what we have been taught again in childhood when i am doing something bad haven't you seen naughty children who go on disturbing the teacher and getting scolded they know they are going to get scolded they know they are going to get punished but they still do it why do they do it because it is attention seeking behavior i get the attention of parent teacher boss friend only when i do something which they immediately react if i am doing my routine work if i am being nice and if i am you know just carrying on nobody cares for me and that was the reason why i give a lot of emphasis to the last uh, point and that is that please you know praise the person when he does not tell lies nobody will tell lies 24 by 7 right there will be times when the person is not telling a lie when the person is even at times acknowledging that yeah i failed in this or i could not achieve that that is the time when you need to give positive strokes and the person realizes that when i tell the truth i get appreciation i get acknowledgement i get recognition so i think in a way it is better if i stick to the truth it is a slow process it takes time it requires a lot of uh, effort but we can work on it because those who have become compulsive liars as i said they have not they are not uh, you know suffering from some mental illness or something like that it is not genetic or nothing like that it can be said right to whatever extent it can and i think if you come across somebody who is close to you and for whom you are concerned whenever you have this thing first understand why the person is doing it that is what we talk about empathy all the time no it is not what he is saying what is he doing he is telling lies but why is he telling lies the deeper i go into that the more i understand that and the more i acknowledge that yes he is a good guy he has certain good qualities but he has gone in sliding down into this ditch of compulsive lying and i will help uh, him to help himself i am not going to scold him i am not going to control him but i'm going to keep creating an awareness in him by which he realizes the advantages of uh, you know not telling lies or reducing the extent of telling lies and as i said the more he tells the truth or whenever he does not tell a lie please give him a lot of positive strokes and make him feel happy right so you know i won't tell you a lie that i need my cup of tea and in the meanwhile i want to see a lot of interesting things in the chat box right now i don't see anything yeah, else yeah yep so just give me a minute sima has something interesting to add on to what i was telling and then i'll be back hi good morning so some very nice tips there uh, from ali on how to handle uh, uh, you know uh, uh, compulsive liars and uh, maybe you know you 
over a period of time this is a, a, a you know a habit that is developed and like he said it is a very slow process uh, you know and it can be worked on upon so uh, if you think uh, you know anybody you know would need that help of course lots of tips have been shared by ali and if you still think that they need some more additional help especially like ali was talking about you know when it is working on their self esteem or the confidence and so many other things the past and all that it needs a you know very uh, detailed uh, introspection so if you think you need professional help for that uh, you know banjara academy provides free counseling so any time uh, you can uh, book an appointment and come and discuss with us so that's that and in fact if you want to uh, become a counselor yourself you want to understand this whole process of how something like this can be uh, done how you can be there for the other person then of course our flagship program diploma in counseling skills uh, it is a very unique program very practical and uh, many of you in fact we are amazed at the number of people who come here from various fields like doctors engineers it professionals everybody is looking at understanding uh, you know human behavior and uh, because interpersonal skills are something that are so so important uh, to keep your, your mental health in a place so if you want to learn in a very systematic step by step way one year part time program and uh, this month uh, we have uh, an early bird offer so you can get in touch with us before 30th april to understand how to enroll the enrollments are already going on in fact we are inviting all of them uh, for many of our discussions at chit talks and you know sending them booklets and things like that already getting them in, in the process uh, the whole process of uh, understanding behavior so yeah that's that's how it is and uh, the other thing i also wanted to tell you that if you want to work on your uh public speaking skills we have another wonderful classroom program called cpcs certificate in presentation and communication skills so this is again a program where many of you even if you don't want to become uh, you know public speakers or uh, you know conduct of course for conducting workshops and all that this is really good and if you want to become life skills trainers or any other type of trainers but even in your day to day life to make presentations you know when you want to stand in front of people and you want to know how should be your body language what should be your you know whole uh, focus and the way, the way you want to take a session, session forward, forward. these have some very nice it's a very fast paced uh, program we'll give you a mentor you can discuss uh, the topic what activities you want to conduct for what age group all that can be done in this program so this is the other classroom program which is coming up next saturday it's starting so any of these things just check out our website and uh, anyway we can pitch in and help you to upskill you be there for you do counseling whatever way we can pitch it just let us know so over to ali again i was wondering what happened to the chat box but it, apparently it was not open so i missed out a lot that yes the standard good mornings are uh, there so i will tell a wholesale good morning to all of you and with that let me move on to vidya's uh, uh, point how to make a 3 year old not to feel insecure as and when he grows who lives only with his mother and once he goes to school he may see other fathers picking and dropping their kids uh single parenting according to me is a gigantic task you know and for that i mentioned it earlier also i'm repeating again from indian conditions i have written a handbook for single parents i don't uh, sell it i give it free the soft copy to anybody who writes please write to me on my personal id which has just been flashed to you anyone like uh, you know there who wants to understand these basic things but since you asked this question what do you tell about the father i would in one line i would say tell the truth you can tone down the truth you don't have to make it horrifying let's say the father was an alcoholic or the father was a violent person or the father had some other affair whatever may have been the unpleasant part of it you can tone it down and say that you know with all good faith we got married and we initially had a nice time 
and we are so blessed that this marriage gave us a wonderful child like you and i love you so much and you are so part and parcel of my life and lifelong i am committed to taking care of you but things did not work out so daddy is no longer with us and we will continue life will uh, uh, go out with a certain truth comes out from the spouses family post wedding how to tackle such a situation that's what i'm saying when you say certain truth comes out before the truth comes out you say it everything that uh, incidents that have happened you say so that this is what had uh, uh, happened and because of this you know daddy said that okay i don't want to live with uh, you so he separated out in these uh, you know even that uh, the father is remarried says so that you know he felt that he wants to have another life partner so he got right and most important whenever you talk this to your child please listen to the child don't make it a one way monologue where you give all this data and then they say okay come let's go and have dinner say whatever you want to and ask the child how do you feel about it let's say the child says no i'm angry he is a horrible fellow why did he do that why did he abandon us why did he leave me and go away don't counter him don't even defend the absent parent just acknowledge the feelings Yes, dear. I know you are very angry with your dad. Yes, I understand that you feel that if he had been here, your life would have been much better. I know you must be feeling very upset. That's all that a child needs quite often. Surika says, "Truth needs no rehearsal." What a stress buster! Exactly, Surika, you hit the nail on the head. truth needs no rehearsal and as people keep reminding truth you don't even have to remember what you told it's only when you tell lies you have to remember what lie did i tell so that next time i have to cover up that uh, lie isn't it life becomes so much easier if we decide to minimize our lies i'm not saying you can be another mahatma gandhi where you would spend your whole life without telling a lie <coughs> to the greater extent that we can do it it works wonders what he says sometimes people also tell lies in order to justify their family members and make stories how to tackle those people i am a strong believer sputi that you should not unnecessarily defend a person who is doing something wrong i know of for example wives whose husband has become an alcoholic but the wife keeps on protecting his image this man is drunk in the house and some guests come she will quickly push him into the bedroom and say no no he had a headache he went to sleep early today there's no harm in saying of late you know he has been drinking a lot and right now also since he had had a little too much to drink he's not in that frame of mind to sit and have a nice chat with you so i told him you go to your room and relax or go to sleep as i said you can tone it down but do not tell lies to cover it right Gauri says one of my friend talks boasts very high about him, but no doubt people get convinced by his talk. But he talks with confidence, but things or talks do not materialize. Exactly, that is the problem with compulsive liars. They think that they can go on and on and on. You can, you know, uh, cheat one person all your life, or you can cheat all the people once in a while, but you can't cheat everybody all your uh, life, isn't it? somewhere or the other this person is going to get into trouble if this person is important to you just go through those few points that i pointed out and gently try to make him understand the benefits of not getting into this boasting and telling lies surika says staying with the truth helps us to stay out of self created drama exactly you don't have to worry what i told you don't have to remember you know how much i said and what i said because you have told the truth there is nothing wrong you don't have to have that drama type of uh, thing in life life becomes so much more simpler akila says at times people lie about us to get into the good books of others but cause trouble to us or sometimes defame us i ignore them i don't even bother to clarify it later when they get to know their apologies at times it remains as a truth i would like you akila to differentiate between people who are very important to you and people who don't matter that much to you second category of people you are doing exactly the right thing that is don't bother to clarify if they are really interested in knowing the truth they will ask you that x said this is this is it a truth i want to know from your version of it then of course you can tell them 
But if they don't do it, don't bother. But be aware of those who are very important people in your life. Those whom you care for, those whom you love. With such people, take that little extra trouble of clarifying. I came to know that X said this, this, this about me. It is not true. I'm not blaming him. I'm not uh, you know, evaluating why he did it. But the plain simple truth is this, this, this. Ah, Shruti has a very interesting question. How do we get to know that the person is lying? This is again part of that skill called empathy, which I keep coming back to round and round. The more you develop the habit of analyzing and understanding people, not getting carried away by what he said and trying to understand why he said. So this person comes and says, I've got this promotion or I have very good relationship with my son or I am taking care of my old father, whatever he may be saying. But there's a possibility that he is uh, lying. So all you have to do is make sure you don't confront him. Make sure you don't uh, you know, question him or try to corner him. But gently start asking a few questions here and there. And you will see that the person is fumbling. You will see that the person is not making proper eye contact. You will see that the person is changing his version every now and uh, then. You see that the person is uncomfortable and wants to even change the topic. Now that is enough for you to say, perhaps he's not telling the truth. I will find my own ways and means to verify whatever he had told me. And if I find that it is a lie, then accordingly, whatever I have to do, I will deal with it. Raji says, I do tell white or harmless lies at times, but I'm definitely not a compulsive liar. Yes, Raji, I accept that. My only question why I spoke about white lies is, that you don't know, sometimes it spills over. So I think that this is just a white lie. It doesn't hurt anybody. It's just a small thing. But it's like, you know, the alcoholic who says, no, I have only one peg in the day or night. I don't drink every day. I'm not an alcoholic. But you know very well how addictions are, no? Somewhere something triggers some experiences, some incidents in life, and the person starts moving in that uh, uh, direction. So it is better to become aware, become conscious and stop even those white lies. One simple way is to keep a record of it. Today I told a white lie to my child or to my neighbor or to whatever it is. Just record that and keep it. Keep entering in your little notepad or whatever every now and then and see how many it totals up to. You yourself will know. Madhvi says, lying is a disease and if you are lying, you are lying to yourself. That is what I always tell my children. One more Ladu and Sage story. Disease, I think, is too harsh a word, Madhvi. I even mentioned to you that it's not a mental disorder or anything. Even compulsive liars who tell lies every day. I would not classify them as you know, mentally ill people. Or thing. Circumstances have made those uh, people the way they are today. So the more we can understand, comprehend, and reach out to them, whatever may be the age, whatever may be the extent of the person telling lies, there is a possibility that we can bring some sort of a turnaround in that person's uh, habits and that person's uh, telling lies. Roshan says, circumstances have forced me to speak white lies in old age. You still haven't come to old age, Roshan. How do you say old age, okay? I don't consider myself to be a saint, but as far as possible, spoken only truth as this can keep me in good health. Yes, that's a very nice point that Roshan has brought out for all of us. Actually, telling the truth keeps you in good health. Both physical and mental uh, uh, health. Now, the times when you are forced to speak white lies, ask yourself, let it be. Okay, you've told that white lie, you ease out the situation and things have moved on. It has not harmed anybody. But like I said, if you can make a note of it, if you can review when you are sitting in a very calm position, was there some other way of dealing with the situation without telling the lie? So at least I become conscious of uh, it. Ha, ah, Javeria has a nice question. How about concealing truth? To me, 
concealing truth is also equivalent to telling uh, lies. I'll give you a simple uh, uh, example. If somebody were to ask somebody who knows me, hey, I think you know Ali very well. What sort of a person is he? Now the person has to tell the truth or lies or whatever it is, right? But supposing the person says, Ali, yeah, yeah, of course I know him. Of course I know him. Since quite some time I know him. But uh, okay, what sort of person uh, he is? Uh, um, no, I, I don't think I'd like to say anything. Has he told a lie? No. But can there be anything more damaging than that? You see how the person has very craftily conveyed to the third person that this guy is not a nice person. Some of these tricks people do when they get into this habit of compulsive lying and all these things, no? you have to become aware. Keep away from it as far as possible, even suppressing truth. Gauri <coughs> says, I have tried, but he says it's my problem and he ignores. So why do you bother? Yes, Gauri, when you are faced with such a situation, you have to take a call. If it is somebody very dear to you, let's say it could be your child or your younger brother or somebody you know who you really love and care for and who's got his whole you know future life ahead of uh, him or her. Then I would suggest keep trying, give a little gap and again say, and at some point bring it up and say, sorry, dude, it's not just your problem. Since I love you so much, since I, you are so important to me, it is my problem also. That is the reason why I bother. I would like to talk. In the extreme case, if the person is very adamant and if you are not the mentor and if you are not responsible for the future of that person, then learn to give up, minimize your interaction and start enjoying your relationship with others. Akila says, sometimes children demand simple things due to financial crisis. Parents may not be able to give them that and tend to lie. Can parents tell truth to children who are very young or promise them that they would get it later, which would not be possible. Please never promise a child something unless you are very sure you are going to get, give it. Day in and day out, I see children getting extremely angry, rebellious, starting to tell lies because the parents said something. The child has been asking on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I want to go out and play. I want Pani Puri, something. And very blatantly, the father said, no, 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 it is week. There's no, I'm very busy. I'll take you on Sunday. Without even realizing that on Sunday he has committed to his friends, he is going to be going out in the morning and then he won't come back. He doesn't even think twice about it, but the child gets very hurt. And the child says, okay, if daddy can make such promises, if daddy can tell such uh, lies, so what if I also do it? So maybe he steals some money and goes and has his pani puri and when somebody asks him, where did that money go? He will say, sorry, I don't know where that money uh, went. Don't ask uh, me. See how we are laying that uh, thing. However harsh it is, tell I said, that brings me to another question. When you tell a child that we don't have money to buy something for you and you go ahead and buy a new car. So what does the child say? I wanted something costing 2000 rupees and you went and bought something which cost 6 lakhs of rupees and you are telling me you don't have money. So don't make blanket statements like we don't have money. You say that we have to prioritize. We have limited income. We are not so rich that whatever we want, we can get. So certain things are priority. Right? Like for example, my car has become very old. It is giving trouble. The other day it stopped in the middle of the road and I'm feeling that it may not give me good service. So I have to save up money and invest. And also I'll be taking a loan for that car. So every month I'll be paying that loan amount from my salary. So that's why we have to be a little more conservative. Gauri says, do people lie as you mentioned? They seek attention or they think with good talks people are with uh, them. Yes, exactly. They're seeking attention. They want to, you know, they want people to appreciate them, become friends and all that. And they think the only way to get it is by telling uh, lies. So I have this... Uh, friends in good places or I have this or I have gone for this great thing. So people turn around and say, oh, is it? Then they, they think that they will make, but it, in the long run, it never works. 
Vidya says, is it wrong to tell lies sometimes to the kids in order to teach them a lesson or to make them realize their mistakes? Frankly speaking, no, Vidya. Why do we tell lies to the children? As I told you, no? By saying something like, you know, we don't have money to buy you a new toy or a new shirt. Which is a lie, you know it. It is just that you are trying to save money, you are trying to prioritize. That right now we need to have, save up whatever money we have for something else. Say so. See, what happens very often is we are a little scared that the child will throw a tantrum. The child will start accusing you, blaming you. Take it, doesn't matter. Once the child understands that the elders always tell the truth and they have certain reasons for it. Here one very important thing is listen to the child. Why is it so important for you to get that new shirt or that new toy or whatever you are talking about? What happens if you postpone it and we buy it only in the Sarah time or later on? What will happen? So as long as you are open to a two-way dialogue, children learn how to control their emotions and not to throw tantrums. Richa says, a truth spoken to hurt someone is worse than a lie spoken to save someone. I generally live by this dictum. Should it be given up or harmless, encouraging untruths are fine. A truth spoken to hurt someone. That is not a uh, truth, Richa. That is hitting out at somebody. I find a, a, a person who has, let's say, cooked some food for me with a lot of effort, but the food is not good at all. So if I point out to the person and say, what is this? Uh, I came all the way to have dinner with you and what is the type of food that uh, I'm telling the truth, but I'm hurting the person. So why do I have to have even say anything about it? The person asks, how was the food? Yeah, it was fine. Okay, we'll talk about it later. Let me quickly finish and I want to leave. I have some other work. That's it. So what I'm saying is you don't have to speak the truth which hurts people. You can avoid that and be very neutral. Roshan says truth flows out smoothly. But one has to think how to make up stories to speak lies. And that cannot be repeated again. This is actually a huge industry, you know. There are people who spend so much of time and effort and energy in manufacturing lies. We had, in my younger days, we had this fellow who used to bring out a small publication which nobody used to read. And he used to go on and on uh, boasting, saying that, no, no, even the top people, ministers, commissioners, they all read it. You people are stupid, you don't read and something. Then one fine day, he said, you know, I went to Dubai. And even in Dubai, the IAS officers were standing there at the airport to receive me. They have such regard for me. Now, he didn't realize that IAS is Indian Administrative Service. You don't have IAS officers in uh, Dubai. And he made a laughing stock of uh, himself, right? Matvi says, thank you, Ali. Disease is the word I will erase. I never thought disease is uh, such a... Yes, in, uh, that's what I told you, no, that even in general, Matvi, I am a person who likes to avoid labels as far, far as possible. One of the things which we are hearing quite often these days is he is a narcissist and I am an empath. It has become like a slogan which people start uh, using. There is no such thing as, uh, you know, putting a rubber stamp and this is a narcissist and this is an empath or something. People have good qualities, bad qualities. People do good things. People do bad things. <coughs> so I personally feel what is the impact? Let us look at that. I even have friends, for example, who are suffering from major mental illness like schizophrenia or bipolar disorder. Only when they are symptomatic, their behavior is unacceptable. Once they go into medication and therapy and their symptoms come under control, they actually make better friends than the others. You know why? Because they are not in the rat race. They have been discarded by society. They have no need to tell lies because nobody is even listening to whether they are telling a lie or a truth. And that is what I feel that why should I label this person as a schizophrenic or a bipolar disorder or anything like that? 
to me, yes, he has certain limitations. He has certain things which are not okay. It's like if you had a, a friend who is suffering from some ailment, if he's got some cancer or whatever, you know, even a major illness, you don't put a label and say he is a cancer person. We don't say that, no. We try to accept things as they uh, are. And we try to work on what can I do when this person is going through these challenges, what can I uh, do? Vidya says, I've experienced that even if I speak truth, it has backfired. How to handle? Yes, Vidya, I agree with you that it does happen quite often, I would say, or sometimes that it backfired. Now, what is the definition of backfiring? People look down upon you, people criticize you, people say something negative about you because you have chosen to tell the truth. Do you have the capacity to tolerate it? Do you have that self-esteem which says, I know what I'm doing is right. My conscience is clear. Also equally important. I have other people around me who appreciate me because I am truthful and straightforward. So even though here I told the truth, it backfired this person is not being nice to me or this person is, you know, <clears throat> punishing me or taking advantage of me. I would rather bear that than, you know, tell a lie. The famous story <clears throat> of Gandhiji was that there was this mother who brought a small child and said, Gandhiji, my son has got into the habit of eating too much sweets. He just doesn't listen to me. How much I've been telling him to reduce his intake of sweets, he just not listening to me. But you know, Babuji, he is an ardent fan of yours. He worships you. If you tell him once that don't eat too much sweets, he will listen to you. Gandhiji smiled and told the <coughs> mother, yeah, definitely I will do that for you. I will tell him. But do me a favor, get him back after one month. What, <laughs> Gandhiji? Two minutes it will take you. He is here outside. I'll just call him. You just tell him in three sentences that, you know, it's not good for your health and you should not eat too much. It will go away. No. Bapuji said, no. Get him back after one month. Mother was very disappointed and she went away. But she remembered his words. So one month later, she took the child and went there. Gandhiji said, bring the child. And he made the child sit in his lap, spoke to him very sweetly and said, you know something? Eating too much sweets is bad for your health. You should not eat too much uh, uh, sweets. Will you do that? The child said, yes, Bapuji, I will definitely uh, do it. And he jumped down and ran away. Mother was surprised. <clears throat> Mother said, just to give this one small statement, why did you make me wait for one month? Gandhiji said, because I also have the habit of eating too much sweets. And I felt I have no right to tell a child that sweets are bad, you should not eat. So you know what I did? One month, I abstained from sweets. And now I have a moral right to tell the child. Yeah, I saw one more from Roshan. Yes. One can die for truth. No, Roshan, let us live for truth. No, why should we die so easily? My father was a role model to all his children and good values and made all his children happy and successful. Yes, this I would like all of you to make, make note of. Because when we say that telling the truth backfires, telling the truth puts you down, it happens. Sometimes, you know, you have to face adversity, but it's still worth it. Vidya says, people say that I'm innocent only because I don't know how to play cleverly and I always speak the truth. Is that acceptable? 100% acceptable, Vidya. Be proud of it and be happy that they are saying that you are innocent and you are not a crafty person. You are not a cheater. You are not a person who brings other people down. So it's been a wonderful time. I hope I have told the truth and nothing but the truth, as they say in the legal uh, language. With that, uh, Sunita is now going to tell you what we are going to have next week. That is on 30th of April. We are going to be talking about how to enjoy vacations, particularly after two years of lockdown. This year, I am told by people who are in the travel and tourism trade that they are overwhelmed with the number of uh, customers that they are getting. So how would you like to plan out your vacation? What are the do's and don'ts? What will really make your vacation worthwhile, both as far as entertainment as well as 
you know, learning something and enjoying it and building up your life with it. So that's going to be next Saturday, 30th April at uh, 11 o'clock. So I take your leave. Thank you very much for being with us. And Sunita will put on this slide once more just for you to catch up if in case you feel like it.